Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about The Orville Season 3, Episode 9, Domino. So this is the second to last episode, and honestly, it felt more like a season finale. Heck, if the series were to end on this episode, I would have been fine. This was a very good action-packed episode. My God, the action in this episode was amazing. Hulu's budget, boy, they went leaps and bounds with this episode. I could not believe all the good sci-fi space battle stuff we got in this episode. Like, man, after watching the action in this, I was like this. And you know, if this would have still been on Fox, the action would have looked pretty good and pretty similar because in season two finale, well, not finale, the um, the, um, the last, the second to last episode, it had some really good space battle stuff, but it was nothing like this, man. The visuals and stuff, the visuals. So anyway, other than the action, this was a very unique and very interesting episode. It kept going in one direction to another and it kept making me think, well, where is it going? Okay, I can kind of figure out where it's going. But then the ending kind of took me for a loop. Now with the ending, it was supposed to be very emotional, but I had a hard time getting connected. Um, only because I really hate this character and stuff. So it's kind of like, you know, I don't know if this experiment worked by introducing this new character. Um, it would have been better if it was a character who's been on the show for the last two seasons and stuff, but you know, I don't know, man. You know, I just, I don't know. So anyway, this episode deals with war, alliances, and moral obligation. Do you create, I mean, do you use a weapon of mass destruction to commit ge um, genocide during wartime or do you not? And that's basically what this entire episode is about. The Union, or more specifically, Isaac and Charlie Burke, created basically a space nuke in their thing. Um, it's an energy weapon that only kills Kalon and stuff. It won't affect Isaac, he's on a different network system and stuff. But it will pretty much eradicate, like, you know, every K-Line and every K-Line ship within a certain radius. A small radius, about the size of a football field. But, you know, they want to expand it and everything. And so, while they're protecting this one planet, it's a bunch of Union ships, they huddle all together. And I'm just kind of like, why are they huddling all together? You know what I'm saying? And then we see why. They activate the weapon and this huge energy burst comes out of the Orville and the rest of the ships and just eradicates them all. Ed and Kelly have a worried look on their face. They look kind of sad. I'm kind of like, why are you sad? You just killed the enemy and everything. And so when they go to um, HQ and stuff, they're talking to the admirals and they're all like, you know, the weapon works. And they're all like, this is awesome. Um, we need to start building more and put them all on Union ships. And this is when they're all like, you know, this is genocide. We can't do this, Kelly and Ed tells them. And the admirals are all like, yes, we can. They are the enemy and everything. And so, like, so I'm like, okay. Because seriously, what do you do? I mean, this is kind of back with the whole... Um, Albert Einstein's like, you know, nuke. If you have a weapon of mass destruction, do you use it? That's the thing, you know what I'm saying? And people now see that creating a nuke was like the worst thing that ever happened, but then some debate, well, that's how we won the war. So if we didn't have the nukes, would we still have won? That is the ethical debate bait in their thing and it's one they must now have and i like how the show does that it makes you really 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 think i haven't thought or just like period when watching any of the new trek shows like i haven't <laughs> you know what i'm saying like it never engages me none of them shows ever makes me think should this happen should that happen like what's the moral fiber of this you know what i'm saying and that's the problem with new trek it never causes people to think about stuff like this. 
And so while this is going on, this took me by surprise, man. The Mocklin go to the Krill and they make a um type of peace treaty type thing and an alliance. And I'm just kind of like, no, man, you you get a spell, but you're still scared of Kalon, so you go to the Krill. And of course they agree, but the female Krill lady who's in charge, she wants to be in charge of the entire thing. Well, the Mocklin's doing their, no women are gonna rule us and blah, blah, blah. And she pretty much shuts them up and they fold, like they fold very quickly. And it's like, aren't y'all supposed to be like women haters and stuff like that? I'm surprised they folded so fast. Now they don't know of the super weapon and everything. And then this took me by surprise. So I think it's Admiral Halsey. I can't remember which Admiral's who. Anyway, it's the Victor Gabriel one. And, um, I think that's his name. Victor Garble, Gabriel, something like that. I can't remember. But anyway, um, he's with the Orville and they decide, you know what? We're going to go to the Kalon, we're going to tell them about the weapon, and we're going to tell them to stand down and try to talk some peace out and everything. Um, be diplomatic, why not? Do the whole Voyager thing, you know? And if they refuse, we're going to use the weapon on them. And so they go there and everything. And of course, the Kalon are being buttheads, and they just start firing on them. Well, they use the super weapon twice on them. And so now they're finally ready to talk. And so they lay it out, you know what I'm saying? They just want peace and they want the Kalon to like stop making their weapons and stop trying to kill them all and all this and that. Well, the Kalon actually fold. They actually agree to it. I'm just like, what? After all this, you agree to it because they think logically. See, they know they can't defeat the weapons. So it's a temporary alliance and everything. They probably plan on betraying them, but right now they need their help and stuff because that weapon can kill them. I'm just kind of like, you know, I don't know how I feel about this. Because it's kind of like, there's only 10 episodes this season. This is the ninth. And after all that's been said and done, they just willing to give up. And not only that, but it's kind of like the k haven't really been a threat this season, you know? So, uh, it's just kind of like a whatever, like toss your hands up in the air. I, we know the Kalon are dangerous, but because they really haven't been used properly this season, they just been sprinkled into the show, popping in and out like whenever and just start firing on people. It's just kind of like, eh, whatever, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 we know they're a threat, but they don't feel like a threat because we haven't seen them be a threat in a real long good time, you know? And then when we have, it's like minor and stuff. We see some Union officers, security guards, and they attack some of the guards. Oh, no, no, no. Um, yeah, they attack the guards from uh, who have, like, the weapons stored, right? And so, like, they steal the weapon. And then they talk to somebody on the communicator who's using a voice modulator. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, it must be some kind of, like, holographic uh, disguise or a shapeshifter or something, right? No, it's legit in there, I think. And you'll never believe who stole the device to give to the Krill and the uh, Mocklin. It's the Tony Danza um, Admiral and everything. I'm just like, no, not him. I'm like, nah, I don't want him to be bad, man. But he's pretty much like this. He loves the Union. He's all for the Union. But he wants the um, Kalon dead. So... He's going to give them the weapon so they can modify it to their um, warp engines and stuff or quantum engines and like use the weapon. And she's all like, well, what are you going to do now? And he's all like, I'm going to turn myself in. I'm like, well, at least he'll do that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just like, nah, it ain't going to be that easy. And it's not. So she fears that he will go back and tell them of the Mocklin Krill Alliance and she blows his ship up. Like, boom. I'm like, ah, man, no more Tony Danza. <laughs> ah. So then it cuts to that, to them singing in a wood cabin. And I'm just like, are they in the holodeck? Am I watching the right episode? Did another episode get, like, sliced into this or something? Well, apparently they want to celebrate. So they went to Kelly's dad's cabin. 
in the woods and it's um Gordon and it's Charlie he's strumming on the guitar singing and she's singing and everything I'm just like I do not feel like watching a musical <laughs> I could care less about this song and so you know they're all celebrating they're all happy they're all this and that and you know and so it's a nice funny scene with Boris and everything him and um Clyden can't open the nuts and use the nutcracker and so <laughs> it's a hilarious thing where Boris is just trying and trying and trying <laughs> and so um Tyler comes in and just crushes it with her hand and then he's all like you made us look like weak fools <laughs> and stuff like that oh boy now they um the kids and the fling kids they're out like kicking a ball around outside so that was kind of nice to see and stuff but of course you know they can't have good times for too much longer because the admiral calls them like look man the weapon got stolen and stuff and so they figure out who it is right and they can't believe it so they go and they investigate like the area uh, where the shuttle like stopped and everything and they see that the weapon that killed the shuttle or destroyed it and killed the people inside was that of a combination of a krill and a, a, a mockler and a weapon so now they're combining their weapons together to make it like better weapons and stuff so they go to like you know the Kalon tell them oop, oop, you know what I'm saying um oopsie like you know weapon got stolen and everything like that so they modify their plan. They're gonna, um, Bordis is all like, you know, the only person that can like work the device will have to be this Mocklin scientist. He's like the oldest scientist ever. And he's really good because the only people who know how to work the device is that of Charlie and that of Isaac. So they're gonna head to like um, that planet and, you know, try to get the device back. Well, when they go there to spy, they see there are way too many ships and it's like 50 meters on the ground. So they call in for reinforcements. And so the Kalon decide they're going to modify their plan. They're going to send one of their people with them to um, ensure that the weapon gets like brought back. And Ed said, you know, they can't get the weapon back. They're going to destroy it. So it's a huge fleet of ships and they just start firing on like the Kalon, uh, not the Kalon, but the, the Kree and the Mocklin. And this is like one of the greatest space battles I've ever seen. And then the um, Kalon show up and they start busting on um, weapons on them. This is a million times better than anything New Trek has done in form of space battle. I can actually see. <laughs> I can see what's going on. I can see what ships are getting hit. I mean, technically all the ships look the same, but that's okay. I can excuse that because, you know, all those Union ships look the same anyway and stuff. But I can see. I can see. <laughs> when it comes to New Trek, I don't know what the world's going on. The camera's flipping around. The, the, the weapons are coming out all weird. I'm just like, what the world is going on? <laughs> and then there's lens flares and stuff. But this was so vibrant, so clear. And so, you know, you have the Union ships and the Kalon ships firing on the outside. Then you got the um, smaller shutter crafts uh, on the, um, near the, um, the uh, I don't know what you call it. I guess like the sky of the planet or whatever. And they're going at it and everything. And it's just glorious, man. It's great. Everybody gets some good scenes in. You get the good shuttle stuff. You get the good ship stuff. It's amazing. And it goes on and on and on. And I love it. I love it. And so, like, then Kelly them ship is about to get, like, destroyed. So they have to basically parachute down, but, like, with rocket jets and everything. And that's cool. Definitely. It looks like they're really flying. Seriously. They can make an Iron Man show, you know, on streaming if they have the budget. Not on Disney Plus or Marvel Disney, because they work their VFX people to death. <laughs> oh. And so then it's a ground battle now. Now you have like Kelly and Tala, you know, they're shooting like, you know, the enemy and everything with the phaser rifles. And then that lady who had a baby with Ed, she's fighting Kelly. And it's a huge fight. 
she should have been a Wonder Woman. Like, I've already reviewed the Wonder Woman pilot. That show should have got picked up. She was holding her own the best that she could. You know what I'm saying? And so then we get into, like, the, um, the lab with the weapon and stuff. And we finally get to see an old um, Mocklin man. And they look different, man. So, in a way, they tell them shut down the weapon. They're like, look, we can't, you know. And there's too many safeguards. So... Charlie, with her weird little, like, fourth dimension ability that's never been explained, by the way. She's doing everything she can with Isaac and stuff. But then one of the guards is about to shoot them. So the other ones decide to flee. And the second in command, um, Kalon, dude, kills them all. And then, so, you know, she's still trying to do what she's trying to do. And she realizes she's just going to have to blow up um, the energy core and blow up the machine. And so then that guard tries to shoot her again, but Isaac shoots the weapon from his hand and he lets him run and everything. And so the Kalon dudes are like, well, why did you let him live and everything? And he said, you know, it was unnecessary to kill him. And then so Charlie tells him, you can learn a lot from Isaac. So after the butt whooping gets done and everything, you know, Kelly and all of them go in the room with them. And so cause Kelly was literally about to lose her life until Tyler had to help um, and everything. And so they realize they're going to have to destroy the machine and they have to be down there to destroy it. So Charlie feels like she's the only one who can do it. So everybody uh, flees and everything. And then Charlie's all like, you know, Amanda, this is for you. And then, boom, Charlie is gone, blown up, sacrificed herself and everything. It takes out most of the planet. And then this is, I'll get to this part later because this is the part that I have a hard time sympathizing and stuff. Now we get back to um, Earth. The Union wants to strike a deal with the Kalon. They want to bring them into the Union. And then the um, Kalon will help them defeat the Krill and the Mocklin. I did not see this coming because it was supposed to be temporary. But they want them in full time. And they agree. And I'm just kind of like, what in the world, man? They are the enemy who wanted to kill you and everything. They might betray you. Even Charlie said they might betray us and everything. Like they did before and it's kind of like in the first episode of this season people on the orville hated isaac for what he did how is an entire uh like you know alliance full of different aliens supposed to like the kalon now you know what i'm saying so that's kind of weird but i mean look at us in germany so you know I guess it happens, you know, in the Kardashians and the um, Bajoran people, but still, at least with Deep Space Nine, this been going on for like however many years it was on, like what, six, seven years and stuff? This is just like recent. So I don't expect people to be okay with this and stuff, because still Gordon is still having some bigotry towards like Kalon and stuff. So Ed talks to his former booty call person, um, that, that Krill lady, and he's all like, you know, I'm sending you to Earth and, you know, you're going to be tried for like war crimes and I can't help you this time. But he talks about his daughter. I'm like, it was about time he brought her up and he's all like, she needs to go home and let her live with me. And she's all like, fine, she can live with you, but you have to let me go. And he can't believe she's willing to sacrifice like give up her daughter and being with her daughter just to be free. So of course he does not agree to it. And I'm just kind of like, that's just a hollow shell of a woman, you know? So chances are they're just going to imprison her and everything. But you know, they need to take her behind out. <laughs> and then we get the funeral. It's for Chuck, Charlie Burke and everything. And so they're remembering her because they're sad about her and stuff like that. And this is the part that's kind of annoying me because one, Seth MacFarlane isn't the greatest live action um, celebrity. And his expressions aren't really selling it. And what's even worse is that Isaac wants to talk on behalf of Charlie. 
And Isaac gives this very riveting emotional speech about how Charlie loved pancakes and uh, how she loved to eat them and everything and how she hated him, but she sacrificed her life for his people and stuff. And he gave more emotion than Seth MacFarlane has in this entire season <laughs> and stuff. And Isaac doesn't even have a face <laughs> or any facial expressions. And so, yeah, and it just ends with like, you know, us looking at Charlie's picture. Now, this is the, the problem I'm having with this. I do not like Charlie. I've always hated Charlie Burke since the first episode. And like I get why she's angry, but she's just like a grumpy person and everything. Like she really hated Isaac. And this is hard because it's like season two of Next Generation with um Pulaski. She would treat Data um nasty. Fans didn't like that. So it's the same thing here. And it's hard for me to sympathize and feel bad for Charlie Burke. Um, because for eight whole episodes, she's hated on Isaac. And when she wasn't hating on Isaac, she hated on the, the Kalon. Now, I get why she hates the Kalon, but she shouldn't hate Isaac no more. And... It's just hard for me because, like, you know, she started to have a turnaround when that one nice Kalon who reprogrammed and everything um, changed her views and stuff. And then she started, you know, liking Isaac a little bit more. And she likes Isaac now, but with eight episodes, it was just too rushed, you know what I'm saying? Because this season is too short. If it would have had 20 episodes, maybe I would have felt something then. Because the first 10 could be her hating on him. And then the rest of the 10 could be her liking him and stuff. So I'm not feeling that emotional connection for her. And I'm glad her character is finally gone. Like, she, she's always annoyed me. I never saw the point of, like, her character and stuff. And they never explain how she can see through the fourth dimension and everything you know and so it was just kind of like eh. but yeah she did sacrifice her life for an entire species she hated but it feels hollow to me because of how mean she's been this entire season now if it would have been somebody completely different like gordon or john or somebody else or like the doctor then I would have felt something because one, you know, I like those characters and two, um, we spent more time with them and stuff, especially the doctor and everything. And that would have been a big emotional thing if it would have been her, but Charlie, I'm just like, eh, and everything. But this now begs the question, if this is the ninth episode, then what the world are they going to do in the finale in the 10th episode? Because this they went all out with this episode. They went all out. And it's just kind of like, what's next, man? And, you know, still now, till this day, this is still supposed to be the last season. The actress who plays Kelly said that years ago. But I suspect it might not be. Hulu would be a fool if they cancel this season. This is literally the best season or the Orville. Um, I like it so much better than season one. You know, I do like season one a lot. Season two, not so much. But season one, I really enjoy. But this surpassed everything of season one and everything. Because they're finally starting to feel their footing and everything. And be a true space opera and stuff. Only problem is they only had a teeny tiny amount of episodes this season. Also, who would be a fool to spend all this money on the visuals just to cancel it and stuff, you know? So, I don't think they're going to cancel it. I think they're going to, like, hold out until the end and be like, okay, it's renewed. You know what I'm saying? Because they will literally be fools if they cancel this show. Like, they would. Like, they seriously would. This is so much better than anything New Trek has come up with. Alrighty. Well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.